Let us now explain the nature and cause of halo, rainbow, mock suns, and rods, since the same account applies to them all. We must first describe the phenomena and the circumstances in which each of them occurs. The halo often appears as a complete circle. It is seen around the sun and the moon and bright stars, by night as well as by day, and at midday or in the afternoon, more rarely about sunrise or sunset. The rainbow never forms a full circle, nor any segment greater than a semicircle. At sunset and sunrise, the circle is smallest and the segment largest. As the sun rises higher, the circle is larger and the segment smaller. After the autumn equinox in the shorter days, it is seen at every hour of the day, in the summer, not about midday. There are never more than two rainbows at one time. Each of them is three colored. The colors are the same in both and their number is the same, but in the outer rainbow they are fainter and their position is reversed. In the inner rainbow, the first and largest band is red. In the outer rainbow, the band that is nearest to this one and smallest is of the same color. The other bands correspond on the same principle. These are almost the only colors which painters cannot manufacture, for there are colors which they create by mixing, but no mixing will give red, green, or purple. These are the colors of the rainbow, though between the red and the green an orange color is often seen. Mock suns and rods are always seen by the side of the sun, not above or below it, nor in the opposite quarter of the sky. They are not seen at night, but always in the neighborhood of the sun, either as it is rising or setting, but more commonly towards sunset. They have scarcely ever appeared when the sun was on the meridian, though this once happened in Bosporus, where two mock suns rose with the sun and followed it all through the day till sunset. These are the facts about each of these phenomena. The cause of them all is the same, for they are all reflections. But they are different varieties and are distinguished by the surface from which and the way in which the reflection of the sun or some other bright object takes place. The rainbow is seen by day and it was formerly thought that it never appeared by night as a moon rainbow. This opinion was due to the rarity of the occurrence. It was not observed, for though it does happen, it does so rarely. The reason is that the colors are not so easy to see in the dark and that many other conditions must coincide, and all that in a single day in the month. For if there is to be one, it must be a full moon, and then as the moon is either rising or setting. So we have only met with two instances of a moon rainbow in more than 50 years. We must accept from the theory of optics the fact that sight is reflected from air and any object with a smooth surface just as it is from water. Also that in some mirrors the forms of things are reflected and others only their colors. Of the latter kind are those mirrors which are so small as to be indivisible for sense. It is impossible that the figure of a thing should be reflected in them, for it is the mirror will be sensibly divisible since the visibility is involved in the notion of figure. But since something must be reflected in them and figure cannot be, it remains that color alone should be reflected. The color of a bright object sometimes appears bright in the reflection, but it sometimes, either owing to the admixture of the color of the mirror or to weakness of sight, gives rise to the appearance of another color. However, we must accept the account we have given of these things in the theory of sensation and take some things for granted while we explain others.